Oh. Yay! What, what? Hello, it's a podcast. Hello, everybody. I know. I'm back after a back, back after a break. Welcome, everybody, to the Dear Maddie Show. This is Matt Marr. This is an early Monday morning because I'm talking to the talking to the Central Coast. It's not a coast, it's in Texas. I'm talking to <laughs> My friend Misty, Le- Levine, 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 how do you say your last name? I should have asked this before. Levine. Misty Levine. Like, like, it's spelled like Avril, but pronounced like Adam or Avril. Oh, okay. Misty Levine, who is known by many people on at, in the crafting world and the, oh my God, you do so many things. We're going to get into that. As a jolly fat elf, I mean, we. I think I will post a link to the video of when you sent me a Christmas Oh my God, you should. It's so yeah. funny. Oh, <laughs> the best ornament ever. But, and we'll talk about that later. But I love this that uh, I think maybe you're the first person that uh, I've ever interviewed on my show that I went to high school with. I think. Hmm. I think you're the Very first. Very interesting. I'm good. But um, so, like, we've actually known each other for, oh my gosh. I mean, I think we became friends more in like high school because we did speech right. and drama together. But, right. But we knew I've known you since I was like five. Right, right. I, I've been out of high school for 20 years. So let's not name any more numbers higher than that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. 20 years ago, I graduated 20 years ago. That's the only number I want to hear. I don't want to talk about. I like I'll be 38 in April. And I'm like, how am I 38 years old? I That's turned great. 37. No, with the year I turned 36. One of our friends posted that she's like, oh, you know, happy. I, I can't believe I'm 36. And I was like, wait a minute. That means I'm about to be 36. And I thought I was turning 35. And I, it was like, I was like, oh, my gosh. And my husband's like, what is the matter with you? I was like, I'm turning 36. And I thought I was going to be 35. <laughs> <laughs> I think we just forget. Like, that's crazy to think about. When I was 36, I thought I've been driving for 20 years. Driving. Yeah, it seems like I just got my whatever. I know people young are listening and they don't, they're like, I don't understand. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I have someone that works for me that's 25 and I'll make references to something and she just looks at me and I'm like, oh, you're so young. <laughs> I know. I know. My boyfriend's 31. So even that, that's not that much of an age difference because I just turned 37 actually. But um, still, I'll say things and he'll be like, what? I don't know. I don't know. But um, all right. So we're so we're so don't bring in any up any of my horrible high school stories and middle, whatever you they, they, you. Know. I can't talk about when your brother shaved your eyebrow off. <laughs> <laughs> when, actually, my brother and I talked about that on the podcast. I think we did. Um, and it's funny that you didn't even know this. That a lot of people don't know that actually, um, I'm the one that shaved my eyebrows. Oh my word! I was. I was. Um. I was vain and bored and I was bored and my brother was with his girlfriend and they were like watching a movie and my mom was doing like bills and my dad was watching TV and I honestly just wanted somebody. I was like, let's play a game or something. I was bored at home. And you know, when you're, it was like seventh grade and you know, when you, you don't have a car, so you can't go out and drive it. It seemed like all my friends were doing something. My parents didn't want to drive me anywhere that night. And so I went to my parents' bathroom and I noticed they have like a little, like, um, they have like a little buzz, little buzz cut thing or what my, I don't know, they, whatever, a little hair trimmer. trimmer. Thing. Yeah. And I looked in the mirror and I went, oh, one of my eyebrows is longer than the other one, which most people, one, you know, if you really look at your eyebrows, they're not going to be exactly symmetrical, but um, it's like your arms, or your legs, one's a little bit longer. So right. anyway, so I trimmed one and then I trimmed it too short. So I like trimmed the right one and it was, oh, and now the right one was shorter than the left one. So I've kept trimming and trimming and trimming until I finally had like maybe an half an inch at top <laughs> worth of eyebrows. And I thought, well, that looks stupid. So I'll just shave them off and nobody will know. And then I shaved them off and I, I looked like, it, this is terrible. And so I don't don't mean to offend people, but I, I looked like I had chemo or something. I mean, it, that's what it looked like. Like right. I looked just... um. Weird. And, yeah. It's so <laughs> yes, weird. And uh, but I looked even weirder because I still have like a full hair of hair on top. So anyway, my I walked in and uh, my my brother's girlfriend at the time, Amy Christian. Yeah. Um. Uh. She just looked at me. And she said, "What's wrong with you?" 
And uh, I started to like, I was like, I think I messed up. And I told them what I did. And my family was very supportive and all laughed um, hysterically for about 30 minutes. <laughs> and then my brother said, you know what? People are going to make so much fun of you. I'm just going to tell people I shaved your eyebrows off. Oh, my word. So, that was so nice. Of you. So that is my, that is like anytime my brother wants to pull a favor rank, he, he reminds me of that. So that's funny. Well, at least you were in seventh grade because like I do, I started doing my eyebrows because about six months ago, it was about five o'clock in the morning. I would use Nair just to clean up underneath it. I wasn't uh-huh. paying attention. And I like, Got rid of half my eyebrow. Oh my gosh! On both sides. So it was like eyebrow, no eyebrow, a little bit of eyebrow. Has it grown back? So I had to learn. Oh yeah, they've grown back now. I just kind of fill them in. But I had to learn how to draw on my eyebrows for a good four or five months. It was pretty. Eyebrows to me are one of the harder harder aspects of makeup. It takes a little time to get it to where it looks natural. Right. Right. So. Yeah, and I, I, I mean, it used to take me about an hour to do my makeup if I was drawing on my eyebrows, but now I'm like a good 20 minutes. And you, they, they look great now. You look great. I'm like up here at seven in the morning, like you're all makeup fresh with your Wonder Woman shirt. I love it. I love it. So, um, and this episode probably will premiere on the day of, um, as you're listening, everybody, I will be seeing Dawn of Justice, Batman versus Superman, and I will be, I'll be excited, but I'm so worried. I'm just, th- I just feel like this is a prequel to Wonder Woman. Like I, 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 I don't re- let Batman and Superman duke it out. I give no shits. I'm just ready to like see Wonder Woman. So I'm excited. Wait, how can you give no shits about Henry Cavill? He is pretty hot. He's really Oh hot. my God. Did I, you ever watch him in the Tudors? No, I heard you see his butt in there. Oh my gosh. He, oh, oh, he's my free pass. <laughs> <laughs> he's a beautiful, beautiful man. I am excited to see the movie. I, uh, yeah, if your husband's Sorry, listening to this. Sorry, I need a moment. <laughs> I need a moment. <laughs> I need a Henry Cavill do you moment. Need a, do you need a cigarette? You don't even smoke. Oh <laughs> like, you just need to calm down. Uh, <laughs> but hilarious. Well, so, okay. So, uh, tell tell everybody a little bit, like, what you do, do now and a little bit of just about your life. And guys, but I usually ask people, how do we know one another? And I already answered that question. So, um, go ahead and, um, yeah, just... Tell us a little, because that's kind of what I've read. That's the beauty of social media and Facebook is that not only have I rediscovered you, but you're doing a lot of creative stuff. You have a, a big YouTube following and um, you're friends with a guy I taught at camp. Like it's crazy. Know, it's, so crazy. it's crazy to connect it. And it's, but yeah, go ahead and speak to that a little bit. Well, I, um, I went to school in Oklahoma. So I went to undergraduate at OU and have a degree in early childhood. And then I got my master's degree at East Central because I couldn't find a job. And I thought, well, if I can't find a job, I can at least go to grad school. So I have a master's degree in public school administration. Mm. And I was working for, I was teaching kindergarten in Tulsa public schools. And I had the worst principal that you can imagine. She didn't believe that the students needed recess. They were kindergarten. They were five years old. She went on my desk all day, blah, 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 blah. Wow. So I was like, I've got to find something that's more appropriate. That's more developmentally appropriate. So that's, I moved to Head Start and I did, I worked with Head Start in Tulsa, then Oklahoma city. And then when Rob and I met, we met online in a chat room for um, big girls and guys that like big girls. Oh, cool. <laughs> so, yeah. So um, we met and I moved to Dallas because he had a house here and I thought, oh, I can get a job anywhere in Dallas. I'm a teacher. <laughs> so I moved down here and it took me a good, I moved in November and I didn't get a full-time job until May. Oh, wow. So um, I worked with Head Start for a few years and now I work for a community college as the director of a lab school. But about six years ago, I kind of caught the crafting bug and I've never really been crafty before, but I just and not, started not kind of caught the bug. Like you got bit hard. I got bit hard. Mm-hmm. Um, and it all started because I wanted purple ornaments for my Christmas tree. And this is before purple was a popular color. It, now purple's everywhere. It really was like, I know my, my friend, Allie Velez, dear Maddie show number, I think two, um, she just had a purple and gray wedding. And I remember thinking that's going to be hard to find those colors and it's everywhere now, but even like five, four years ago, it was nowhere. 
Right. So that's when I started the ornaments and then I did the ornaments for a few years, probably four years actually. And it just got to be monotonous. Like the people want, people want Like I did 15 fleur de lis ornaments one time and I'm like, this is just not as fun as I thought it would. But at the same time, I wanted to make purple Christmas cards. <laughs> so I got on my first search engine, which is YouTube. And I found some videos and I thought, oh, that's really fun. And I started making cards and then I got to the point where I was like, well, I want to make card making videos too. And that's, I've been making videos for about a year now. So I make cards. Um, and then I had a really hard time last year with depression and anxiety. Like I, it came out of nowhere and I thought I've got to take some time every day for some self care. Mm -hmm. And so I found my second venture, which is called perfectly posh. And it's all about pampering products. So it's skincare and stuff for the bath and those kinds of things. So I have Stampin' Up, which is my creative side. And then I have Perfectly Posh, which is my pampering side. And then I have my full-time job, which pays the bills. <laughs> so, which is all. Which is yeah. All. And then Rob and I have been married. We've been married six years. We got married on New Year's Eve. Oh, so that's a good day to get married. Yeah. So we can file taxes together. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. That's amazing. And we've been together since then, and he is um, April third will be our seventh year together as a couple. Oh wow! We met on we met online, and um, he's fourteen years older than me, so I tell him he's kind of pervy because he was, you know, grad had graduated high school by the time I or was getting ready to graduate by the time I was in kindergarten. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's hilarious. yeah. So, and we adopted a cat, Roxy, and um, you just got Roxy, right? Yeah, we've been here two months, and people think that she is Grumpy Cat Jr., but... She does have a grumpy she, face. Oh, my gosh, she has RBF, so it's so good. But we had gone... I'd been talking about it and talking about it and talking about it, and one day Rob's like, well, why don't we just go look at cats? And I was like, okay. So we didn't find one we liked, and then we got home, and I started looking at the shelter, and there she was, and I was like, oh, that's my cat. Uh, <laughs> so, is she, is she yeah. acclimating well? Oh yeah, absolutely. She she loves us and we love her. Um, she's right here on my desk beside me right now. She she wants to be by me all the time, which I really love. So Aww. yeah, Aww, maybe I'll good. get her on camera. But she doesn't like to be held. Like she's not a yeah. lab cat. She just so likes to be by you. She just likes to be by me. Yeah. Oh, that's so really that's obvious. Yeah, that's I mean, that's really about it. I don't have any kids and No, you've got a lot going on because for instance, like the way you calendar is amazing to me. I can't <laughs> like you both one of those planner people. <laughs> so let me give a little bit of uh because I don't know how much of my uh my listeners are uh, quite uh, accustomed to this. Like when you say videos, like there's this whole world. Uh, I think it's like it reminded me of like video gaming. Like people don't realize there's this. I mean, that's what most of YouTube is. It's like video gamers. Right. And um, a lot of people don't know that. And when I first discovered it, I was like, wow, this is a whole thing. But this is a whole thing with the crafting world that there's so, which is great. I think YouTube is a perfect medium for it. I was kind of like, wow, I'd never thought about that. But there's so many videos of, if you, I'm telling you, if you're listening and you have an idea of something, a do-it-yourself project or crafting that you want to do in your house, just Google it on YouTube because... It's going to be there. Like, I'm like, right. you're, so your videos, you definitely are like starting, like you take this blank calendar. It's just two pages. And then you like 20 minutes later, you have like, it's a piece of art. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I really enjoy that. And it's so funny because I think we, I think we're moving back towards a paper, pen and paper. And because everybody's like, well, just use your phone, just use your phone. Well, my phone doesn't always, you know, work. Like sometimes I can't even get it to ring, let alone, you know, mm -hmm. update the calendar. So, and there's something just kind of cathartic about playing with stickers. I mean, I'm 38, almost 38 yeah. years old and I play with stickers once a week and I had my own sticker shop, but whew, I was like, I don't need one more thing on my plate, oh, let it go, but yeah. you know, it's just fun. It's just, I enjoy it. It's just so much fun. And so many people, you know, are like, oh, you know, I love that. And oh, what, you taught me how to plan. I'm like, planning is just organizing, <laughs> organizing your time. But it's really, I mean, if you go to YouTube and you search plan with me, you're going to find thousands of videos of people planning and decorating either, you know, an Erin Condren planner or, um, 
like I use a A5 binder, so like a KKK or a Filofax or something like that. So it's kind of it's kind of weird how it goes in cycles like that. So well, I think it also reminds me of um, I use my phone because it's it's just it it works for me, but at the same time, when I saw you do that, I thought. I'm a very visual learner though. And so I actually thought, I think that what's cool about it is that it's recognizing that some people like technology doesn't, it's just with words and I was, you know, cause I'm borderline, not borderline, but like I'm a little bit dyslexic. And so sometimes like having visual age of pictures of having a, a sticker of a laundry machine on laundry day, that actually will help, help me right. remember. Cause I want, I thought, you know, it reminded me when I did have a written calendar, there was something about writing it down. I remembered my schedule in my head more. And now I don't remember my, I cannot tell you what I have planned for tomorrow at all, but I just right. know that it's in my phone or on my Google calendar. And I thought, Oh, that's a, that's a difference of way where I don't know. I'm not an expert. Well, I guess I am. an expert. I have a degree in psychology, but I'm not an expert on this, but in that I thought, Hmm, I wonder how we're, how is technology affecting the way our brain is re retaining memory and information? I don't know. It was interesting to me. Yeah. It's um, fine. You should try it. I'll send you some pages and some stickers. So been, <laughs> my boyfriend's going to be like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm calendaring. Back off. I'm planning hey, my mind. Rob, Rob does it. I got Rob into it. Oh, really? That's hilarious. Yeah. I love it. I yeah. love it. I love it. Now, something else I wanted to talk about, and I hope it's okay. If, if you don't want to talk about this, we can edit it out. But you talk about it publicly on Facebook and in your YouTube videos. And, and I think it's something that a lot of people will relate to is that you and your husband, Rob, have like really, I mean, you just recently paid off all of your credit card debt. And so is that, can we talk about that? Is that okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that um, I love, I'm interested in just a little bit of your, the story of especially I'm in that too now where my boyfriend lives with me. And so we're kind of combining finances. And I think a lot of people, a lot of people feel like they don't really have their shit together on their own with money or they feel okay. And then they get with somebody else and then they're assuming their debt and they're, you know, everything comes right. joined. And I mean, that's money's the number one reason why people break up in this country. So I just would like to hear a little bit of your story about that, about how that evolved for you and Rob and what was that like? Right. Well, Rob lost his job three days before we met. In fact, wow. when he called me and told me he lost his job, we were meeting that weekend. And I was like, is this your out? Like, are you <laughs> trying to get out of meeting me? And he's like, no, I just want you to know. Well, he was out of a job, a full-time job for three years. Oh, wow. So when we first got married, the first eight months of our marriage or eight months of our relationship, no, it was marriage. Neither one of us had a job. So we were living, you know, on credit cards and we had to end up selling the house he had and we moved in with my sister-in-law. And so once we finally got back on track, both of us were working full time. We were still, we never had any money. I mean, like we never had any money. And I remember it was 2014 and I do a, a word of the year instead of resolution. So my word of the year that year was organization. And I was like, Ooh, I'm gonna Ooh, I you love know? that word of the year. Ooh, let's come yes. back to that later. Go ahead. Okay. So I was like, I'm going to organize our finances. I'm going to organize, you know, my craft room and I'm going to organize my office because I'm the messy one of the two of us. Mm -hmm. I'm like, so the moment that it clicked for me is when I got our tax, like our W-2s to do our taxes. And together, we made over $100,000. Mm. And we were living, barely living paycheck to paycheck. I mean, I was trying to stretch, you know, $50 at Aldi for groceries. I mean, it was horrible. And I was like, what the hell? So I, did, I was like, I'm going to come back to this. I can't handle it right I now. Have to say, I, literally just, I literally just did my taxes. And I actually just said to my boyfriend, I was like, I made this much money. Where did this all go? So I'm like, exactly. I'm like, oh God, you're talking to me right now. Keep Yeah. Going. So, so January, I didn't do anything about it. February, I didn't do anything about it. So March, I sat down I'm like, and I found on YouTube, because that's what you do, a zero based budget. And this guy explained it so well. And Dave Ramsey has kind of made it, you know, more popular, the envelope system and everything, but you, you just you make your money work for you. And so I sat down and figured out our finances and I was like, where's our money going? We spent $400 on eating out the month before oh, wow. 400 for two people. And I was like, this is not going to work. So I just sat down and I figured out all of our finances and we were probably 
without our mortgage, we were over $125,000 in debt. Oh, wow. And that's without our mortgage. And I was like, this isn't going to work. We're going to have to get this paid off. So I started doing the debt snowball, which is, you you know, you pay off one small bill and then the next month everything goes to the next bill. And, mm -hmm. you know, you pay the minimums on everything else. And we started doing that. In the first three months, we paid off $8,000 in debt. Oh, wow. And then it just, yeah, it just kind of went from there. And this is our second year, March. Just We just finished our, what I called our big daddy credit card, which is the visa. We owed $15,000 on it when we started and we just paid it off. But wow. um, so it's Too just, bad. thanks. And every, every extra penny that we have goes to our debt. But we still do things like we still go out to eat. Like I said, a budget. Um, I do a grocery budget and I have, I actually have a video on my channel that walks you through how I set up my budget. Oh, really? But, okay. Because I'm not the type of person that can quit everything. Like I can't give up cable and internet. Well, I can't give up cable because my husband has to be able to watch sports. Oh, <laughs> because I just if paid. not, he would drive me crazy. I just got I cable really for March Madness for my boyfriend. So I get that. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, you know, and so I wasn't going to cut out cable. I wasn't going to give up the internet. I knew I wasn't going to cook every single day so i but i just we use cash we use cash for everything and once the cash is gone the cash is gone and you don't do anything else and it's hard i'm the spender i put my i had to give myself an allowance because if not i would just you know you don't think about that debit card or putting in that number but when you have physical cash in your hand it hurts to spend that cash. You're like, oh, I don't want to spend this cash. So mm -hmm. it's taken a lot. And Rob was like, we should get on a budget. We should get on a budget. Well, I was never taught how to budget. I mean, both of my parents, you know, neither one of them handle money very well. So I come mm -hmm. by <laughs> naturally. Well, I don't think, it, I don't think my parents do handle money very, pretty well, but they still didn't teach me how to do a budget. It's, and it's not, we're not taught that. I'm like, why isn't this a class that we're learning in high exactly, school? Exactly. You know? Exactly. I, and that's the thing. Like I had, I Rob took on my debt, even though I had filed bankruptcy. I filed bankruptcy in 2003 because, you know, you go from being a high schooler who has to have permission to go to the restroom to this college student with no nobody watching over you yeah. and I oh here sign up for this credit card and you'll get this free t-shirt okay let me sign up for that credit card. yeah I know the t-shirt yeah those traps on campus you know credit card people on campus and all sorts of things which I think should be illegal but whatever so I mm -hmm. never and I I was of the thought that if you had money left after you paid your bills then you know it was you do what you want to with it but we've you know we've really had to change that way of thinking no you got to make your money work for you you got to know where every and i that very first month i remember i had five dollars left in my checking account and it was really really hard for me but all of our bills were paid and you know we'd put it toward debt so it takes a couple of months to get used to it but it's definitely well worth it so when you speak to that i feel like a lot of people feel like if they buckle why people don't, I think a main reason why they don't want to budget, and I can speak for this for myself, but also from clients and people that told is that if they buckle down on your debt, then they're not going to, um, they're not going to be able to enjoy life. Yeah, I know you just have to budget for it. Like we're going on vacation in September and we figured it'll probably cost about $3,000. So I'm putting, you know, $500 away every month. So by the time we get to September, we're paying for it. Um, we, that's called a sinking fund. I mean, we could get real technical if you want to, um, Rob takes public transportation, that's $600 a, you know, a year. So, and that's due in October. So in January, I put aside $60 a month in an envelope. And so when we get to October, he has, you know, his money, we budget for Christmas. I put a thousand dollars away every month. And in December we have $1,200 to spend on Christmas. So it's just about saving your money. We have an emergency fund. We don't right now because I pulled some of it. <laughs> Some of it out to pay off that credit card. I was like, we are paying off this credit card right now. But <laughs> we put, you know, we have a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars in our savings account in case something happens. I mean, like it normally like car repairs, but I just got a new car, so that doesn't count. But mm -hmm. like if something happens with the house or one of us has, you know, I'm prone to go to the hospital twice a year. So if I have to go to the hospital, then I have that money. Mm -hmm you know, set aside. So, and it's not blow money, you know, we get that in an allowance. It's, mm. you know, this is money in case something happens, new tires or you need a new furnace or something like that. I love so, that. Well, I'm going to put the link to, um, 
I'm going to put the link to your uh, budget. Uh, I'll get that from you, and I'll put that in the link to the show notes for everybody, as well as as well as your crafting videos and all things Misty Levine. I will put in, <laughs> in the in the in the show notes. Um, well, let's get to some questions, shall we? Yes. So, um, all right. So, our first question. This is from Marie, age thirty-five, and she says, "Dear Maddie, I'm a professor with an MA or a master's and an MFA. So that's a master of fine arts. So I'm a professor with an MA and an MFA in creative writing, which means I'm also a writer. After graduating, or after, pardon me, after grading for hours, I sit at my laptop for more hours, writing, revising, and submitting for publication. A friend and former colleague who isn't a writer and doesn't have an MFA." has asked for and will soon be granted the ability to teach creative writing here and abroad for her institution. She thinks it will be fun. Just go to a place and then write a story and has asked for my ideas. I've worked hard to establish a program of merit at my own college where we need a degree in creative writing to teach it. And while it can be fun, I take it seriously. I don't agree with that my friend and her program are, I don't agree with what my friend and what her program are going to offer. I find it kind of insulting. Should I tell her this? If so, how? I can't keep simply avoiding her request. Thanks for listening to my longish question. That is not long, Marie. So Marie, 35, got her master's in creative writing and her, sounds like her friends, off gallivanting on the world with hot Italian men. I don't know. <laughs> Greek men <laughs> writing stories and living a life of luxury in a gondola um, and yes. Venice. <laughs> yes. yes, with olive oil being poured on some man's chest. And um, so, what 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 did you? What were your first re in responses when you read this question? I my my main thought was, why is she letting her friend steal her joy? Like it feels mm. like what her friend is doing doesn't need negate what she's doing it doesn't yeah you know take away the importance of what she's doing mm -hmm. and you know is the friend asking for story ideas i mean just tell her no <laughs> but yeah. as far as you know telling her that you don't appreciate her program what does that really solve does that you know does that I always, there's a conscious discipline, Dr. Becky Bailey, you know, are your words helpful or are they hurtful? So are you telling her that to be helpful? Like, does that help her, yes. her you know, help her in some way? Mm -hmm. or are you just saying that to be spiteful and hurtful? Because it just can't, to me, it comes across as you're either envious of what she's doing. You know, you're envious that she's able to go on, you know, this grand adventure and do mm -hmm. what she loves or, you know, I don't know why she would find it insulting because different different colleges and universities have different programs that are ran different ways. Mm -hmm. So her and I, maybe she's putting too much stock in her letters. Like the, I have letters after my name, but that doesn't make me any better or worse than my teachers who teach underneath. No, me. I mean, yeah. So, I mean, so it's like, it's not negating your work. So why put so much stock in it and why, why dampen her joy? Just because, you know, I think she needs to get to the root of the problem. Is it jealousy? Is she envious? You know, is that something that she would like to do? Or is she putting too much stock and merit into, you know, her master's degrees? And which, yeah. don't get me wrong, it's a master's I mean, graduate school is not easy. And it's when not. you're working no, no, no. full time and you're going to graduate school, it's rough. I get that. I was a first year teacher going to graduate school. So I get that. So I'm not negating that at all. But it's like, why, what do you really need? You know, why do you want to tell her that? What will that solve? Are you helping her or is that just hurtful, but will make you feel better? So that's how I kind of saw it. I, yeah. I mean, I think that, I think you're on point, you know, I think, especially, but I can relate to that being an actor in Los Angeles, that everyone is having success that I feel like that I want, or I'm not there yet. And I'm like, Oh, they're booking this show or they're doing that. And then, it's also realizing the fact that uh, someone else is looking at me and saying, I want what Matt Marr is having. And even though I don't feel like it's, you know, I feel like I'm, you know, just doing the best I can. So for Marie, I think, I think you're right on that. It's um, one of my friends, um, Don McCoy, uh, who I've had on the show a couple of times. Uh, she said uh, she has a kind of a, a guru that she goes to. And she says often, if you spot it, you got it. So meaning, like Marie, you're you're spotting this in your friend, 
And maybe it's something that you, like you said, Misty, maybe it's something that she wants. Because it, honestly, Marie, what she does with her job has, it has nothing to do with you. It, it is it, nothing to do with you or your, your self-worth. So I mean that in a positive way. It has nothing to do with your self-worth. But I also mean like, girl, move on. Like it's, this isn't, a, I, it sounds like you've got like amazing stuff going on. You're educated. You're, you seem very passionate about your program. You seem very dedicated about your program and you're busting your ass. Keep focusing on that. You do you and, and be the most awesome teacher you can. Now, if your friend keeps requesting for, I get that. I feel like there's been some people, you know, some people come to me and they say, oh, I want to start a podcast. Uh, and I'm like, sure, great. I'd love to help you. And then there's some people that say, hey, I want to po start a podcast. And they kind of, I start to talk to them a little bit about all the work involved in it. And their eyes kind of roll over. And they just kind of want me to just do it for them or give them the quick fix. And for those people, I kind of like will give them a little answer. I'm not going to say it in case <laughs> some of them are listening. But uh, <laughs> there's, I like have a stock answer. So Marie, so maybe it's, you know, when your friend asks, hey, what advice can you give? Maybe you can give her or him, I think you said her, um, maybe you can give her like just one answer of, you know, kind of a general life advice as a teacher. And then you can follow that up and say, whatever is comfortable for you. Don't lie. But you could say something, you know, um, I've said this before with podcasting. I've said, you know, there's a lot of rules about podcasting and you should try it this way or that. And I know for me, it was just kind of taking in all the information that I can and then deciding on what fit me best. And I don't want to tell you what to do. And so maybe it's giving her some type of advice like that. So that way you can, I get it. So you can get her off your chest. Cause maybe this wouldn't bother her as much if her friend wasn't asking her all the time for advice on how to right. be a teacher. So, and I, right. I get that, that I get that Marie, you don't, you don't need to be her teacher. You don't need to be her lifeline. And I think there's just a nice way of saying that unless you want to, I mean, if it really bothers you and you want to talk to her, but it, I love what you said earlier, Misty, that because I've said to clients a lot, I said, you know, if you're upset about something, you need to figure out if you talk to somebody, what is the response you want? What is the hope that you want in talking to someone? If the hope is that you want to have a, a better connection with someone and you want them and you want to understand more about where they're coming from, if you want to then that's a good intention. But if you want them just to know that you're upset or you want them to know that you're right or that you're that you're doing better than they are or that you are whatever, if it's about you and that's the reason why you want to talk to somebody, then you don't need to talk to them. That's if you don't want, if they're like, they need to know that I'm upset. No, you need, that's not going to facilitate a helpful conversation at all. And don't, Again, don't let what she's doing negate what you've worked so hard for. Because yeah. there, you know, there's... Stealing her joy. You said it first yeah. up. I'm like... Yeah. Don't let her steal your joy and don't steal her joy. Let's just be happy. <laughs> yeah, I think that it's great that you never know. The way I look at it, Marie, maybe she's going to go off and teach and probably make a lot of mistakes. But maybe this is... Some, maybe you are envious. Maybe this is something you would want to do. So... Let her go off, make some mistakes, find out some stuff, and maybe she'll come back to you as a friend and say, this is how she did it, and give you advice if you want to travel abroad and teach creative writing. Right, and you can always, you know, be a freelance consultant or whatever and charge. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so I hope that helps, Marie. I know we didn't necessarily, I don't think, agree with where you were. Not a, yeah, I agree. I think that we think that you're honestly. I just think you sound like a great person, Marie. I just think that you're you got bigger fish to fry, girl. So ooh, now I want fish. Ooh, now I want Long John <laughs> Silvers. Um, or scallops. Ooh, oh, Long John Silvers. You know, you remember I worked there for like four years. Did you real? Oh, I forgot you did. Yeah. I yeah. just feel like, I mean, they did that ruin hush puppies for you? No, oh, no, oh. it ruined. It actually, no, it didn't ruin anything. Okay. Oh, good. <laughs> clearly, it didn't ruin clearly, anything. Clearly, it didn't ruin anything. <laughs> um, all right. So we've got another. I've, I've got three questions. We might just do two because we've been chatting a lot. I love it. We've got stuff to talk about. But this. Next, so let's go into this next question. We're getting political um, on the Dear Maddie show. Oh, Jesus. Um, <laughs> so, you know how I get. So I I'll know. do my, my I know. best to tone it down. <laughs> 
Well, I'm just seeing on Facebook, like I invented and friended four people today. It feels great. Um, this is from Denise, age 34. And Denise says, Dear Maddie, so I'm finding out via Facebook that my friends and I have strikingly different political opinions. I can't stand Hillary Clinton, and I'm assuming you probably like her. So sorry. And yes, I'm a Trump supporter. Many of my friends think I'm crazy. Anyway, the point of this question is I feel like me posting Trump articles uh, and my friends are posting a lot of Hillary articles and it's coming between us. I want us to be able to differ but get along. How do I make sure we all get along and respect one another? This is from Denise, our Trump supporter, age 34. Um, Well... Bite my tongue and call me a, I don't know what, but I'm just going to be blunt. I hate I, Trump. <laughs> I have deleted everybody on my Facebook friends list who has either liked or posted about Donald Trump. I just, I just saw this morning. There's just some more missiles fired from North Korea by South Korea. And I'm thinking, and we really want this person to be our president to navigate this. I just. Well, when it comes down to, and I'm not a Hillary supporter either. I mean, I may vote Bernie, but to me, I hate politics. But yeah, I'm not really a fan of that. We're talking about a person. This isn't political. Is a hate monger. Yeah, he, you know he he's racist, and if I have somebody in my life who's okay with that, then that's a that's a moral and ethical and core value thing for me and I refuse to be friends with somebody who would want another person to be treated like that it's the same thing when you know all the gay marriage stuff first started and I seriously I went from like maybe 450 friends on Facebook to maybe 150 because I no in no right does my skin color or my sexual preference or my orientation make me better in any way and everybody on the planet regardless of you know if they're gay lesbian purple polka dotted yellow you know whatever we we all have the same rights we should have the same rights as a human being yeah and when you support somebody who thinks that people need to be assassinated and you know we're talking about racial genocide hello we're talking about 1940s and that I just cannot be friends with somebody either online or real life who supports that type of thing. I just don't have any room in my life for people who are hateful. Well, I think that's a, I think that's a big, um, where a lot of the divide comes where, yeah, I'm, I'm admittedly a Democrat and I'm a more liberal leading person that said, um, I don't think I'm not one of these Democrats that thinks like George W. Bush is a terrible, terrible, horrible person. I just think it's all politics. Um, And my mother and I have talked a lot about that because my mom is very Republican. And um, but we both have talked about how um, I know as a Republican, she's spoken to how she feels that she's one of those Republicans who feels that her party is kind of not betrayed, but just doesn't fully represent her anymore. And that she is very pro gay marriage. She's very much pro women's right to choose those kind of things. And um, the party has become so um, ethically and morally minded. And she feels like it, she, all she cares about is the really is the economy. She wants to go back to like more like that Reagan stuff, I guess for her. But anyway, um, what I was going to say to that, though, is sometimes my mother posts things on Facebook that I'm like, oh, my God, like I don't agree with. And so, Denise, I I can relate to that of somebody I love um, because, you are you know, we're speaking to like. Some people are friends that with Trump that, that well, what I was going to say is that sorry, gay DD, I'm all over it with Trump. It's um, it's a little bit different because it's not about like. It's not a different in politics. It's like I posted on my Facebook, I think that video of like McCain, like talking about somebody talking about Obama being a Muslim and like how beautifully and politically in a great way McCain talked about that and addressed somebody in a very um, just what a politician would do and how Trump is the antithesis of that. He's like a basically a narcissist and a little like spoiled brat. And I think that. So Denise, I, I you know, for I, I think I've had this question before about how do I kind of navigate 
Um, and I think a big thing is you don't have to unfriend people. You can unfollow them on Facebook and things like that. If you don't want to see them, I do that a lot. Um, <laughs> but, um, but also to Trump is different, Denise. And I'm just going to call this and say, if you agree to, if you agree to stand by somebody like that, you do have to respect the consequences of your actions. And I can't separate myself. And I try to not be, as a host, I try to like welcome all points of view. But honestly, it reminds me of I remember when Oprah Winfrey had a show when she was um, like back in the 80s in the early beginnings of the Oprah Winfrey show. And she actually had uh, racist like neo-Nazi people on her show. And she had them because she wanted them to like she was she was hoping that either it would give them a change of heart that they would see that what they're saying is hurtful and what it is wrong and blah, blah, blah. And she realized, she said, I realized during halfway through my show, I was giving them a platform to promote their agenda. And I feel like that's what people with Trump, they don't realize that we're just giving him a platform to promote this hate speech. And Denise, I just, I'm sorry, but I feel like if you said you like Kasich or Ted Cruz, who's Ted Cruz is like, has crazy conservative thoughts and, and and combines religion and political and politics, which really bothers me. But if you said that, then I would say, you know, people, that's just a respect and differences. But Trump is a different ball game. This is somebody, like you said, Misty, who is who is a racist, who is a bigot, who is promoting hate speech. And I just think, Denise, that if you're gonna support somebody like that who is, I think, borderline an evil person. Then you're gonna and like my dad says, if you run with the lame, you're gonna limp. And if you choose him and support him publicly, you need to accept the consequences of that. That's how I feel. Right. And just keep politics <laughs> politics yeah. on Facebook. Maybe you don't There's yeah, <laughs> you don't need to I try not to post a lot of political if it's about gay stuff and human rights or like um some things that like Black Lives Matter, that kind of stuff doesn't feel political for me. That feels more right. human rights right. or um but Trump was really the first person where I like full on was like, I just want people to know that are because we're from Oklahoma. And I know that there's my brother's neighbor. They have like a down with Hillary up with Trump sign, like right on their front yard. I honestly want people to know that I think one of my neighbors who said like I, I posted how I think you think I'm a bigot or a racist. And I'm like a little. And it's so funny to me that he is a black man who loves Donald Trump. And I'm like, I don't. I don't. Well, it's like Christians too. So many Christians yourself? are flocking to him, and I'm like, he's so against the teachings of Jesus. <laughs> he is the most unchristian president. He is. I will say this: Donald Trump is the most unchristian candidate we have ever had in the history of presidential candidates. And I'm not an expert, but I will. I will vouch that that is 100. percent I mean. He, an atheist, is more Christian. A kind atheist is more Christian and Christ-like than that man is. Right, right. Anyway, I do. But yeah, I mean, I don't I don't get when people post stuff like that because it's not like you're not going to change anybody's mind. I mean, you're people, not. You're, people are either for Trump or they're not for Trump. They don't Trump. give any fucks about your Facebook post, people. So, <laughs> and Except sorry. for me, who I'm like, thank you for letting me know that you're a racist bitch. <laughs> Delete. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Well, you know, maybe I feel bad for my questions today because I feel like both of them asked questions kind of a little bit wanting validation about what they asked and we're like no no, no, no you're sorry, just, not um, so I, I I think Denise let, let me try it because I do I do appreciate that you wrote in um how do we are able to differ but get along and how do we you know how do we respect one another and I think Denise there's a that's a two-part question as far as respect I don't think people are going to respect you if you're voting for Donald Trump. I don't. I think if you other Republican candidates, that's different. But I think that you're just you're going to get it. That literally is for a lot of people. I'm not saying I know you don't feel this way, but some people feel that when you say I support Donald Trump, it's the same as when people said I support Hitler. And I know that might seem dramatic to you, Denise, but some people feel that way. So you need to know that, that some people will lose respect for you for that. But as far as like, like you said, Misty, I think that Denise, if you want to get along with your friends, maybe you, don't, maybe you need to comment on cute pictures of their kids and ask what's going on in their life and not, you know, talk about political conversations. I don't, I love my mother. We talk about a lot of things. We necessarily don't talk about politics. It's not something right. that we... And we don't even necessarily have fights about it. We just kind of go, 
I roll my eyes at her and she rolls my eyes at me. So, and that's about it. That we still, you know, it's just, you don't need to share everything. Remember that last, and during the last election, there was, I think you're the one that sent it to me. There was a Google plugin where every, you could type in words. And if those words came up in your Facebook feed, they would put a picture of a cat. Oh, Instead, yeah. Yeah. Do you remember that? I'm like, yeah, I, I need that. <laughs> yeah, I need that again. I need that. Because we're still, what, seven months from the election? And this oh, has gosh. been going on for, you know, the last year. And it's just like, at this it's, point, it's out of our hands anyway. It's so, out of, yeah. You know, it's like, just. Jesus, I, the wheel. <laughs> yes. Oh, Lord, please. Lord, Jesus, please. <laughs> take, <laughs> please. <laughs> take the wheel. <laughs> take the wheel. Um, oh, my word. Uh, well, so let's. Okay, so sorry, uh, I'm going to skip the next question, but that's all right. I need I need questions for next week's show, by the way. So if you have a question and, and you feel, if, if you want us to basically not agree with you, <laughs> um, go to Dear Maddie. You want zero validation yeah, you in want your zero life. validation for your life. Hey, truth, hashtag truth talk. We keep it real. Um, uh, go to DearMaddieShow.com and you can ask a question. Uh, you can also sign up there for the newsletter and stuff for the show. So let's move on to a celebrity shit the bed where we're talking talk about some things going on in the, in the pop culture uh, pantheon. Uh, so what, what's, what's on your mind this week, Misty? What, if, what, what did you want to bring up? Well, I know we had talked about um, the thing with the plus size supermodel. Oh yeah. Yeah. We tweeted, t- we texted about that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> who doesn't want to be considered, who doesn't want to be called plus size. So, okay. Yeah. So fill people <laughs> in about that. And also I love that because you know, you are a plus size girl. And so you definitely, um, uh, you definitely own it and you're definitely, um, I feel like I, I love that. It, it almost reminds me a little bit and you can speak to your own story, but, uh, I always say that when I'm growing up, I thought being gay was the biggest problem in my life. And now that, um, I am very out gay, it's like one of the things that kind of has saved me or it's like part of my identity. And I, and um, it's one of the things that I love about my life. And so I don't know if like, if being a bigger has been that way for you or, um, how your experience has been with that. Well, I think, cause yeah. I remember, honestly, I re- not to interrupt, but you know, you're such a strong person now. And I remember, I remember people making fun of you and like, I remember hearing, you know, I remember it's in my whole entire life. Yeah. My whole entire, I mean, it started in kindergarten and um, with the love of my, my high school, my, like I loved him from kindergarten until we graduated high school, you know, calling me big apple. And I remember him getting licks for that. Cause that's back when, you know, they have corporal punishment Yeah. But I, I've literally been fat since I was five years old. And my mom seems, my mom told me that there may have been some, you know, sexual misconduct mm. by a babysitter's son or something. I have no recollection of that, mm. but there was a time, I mean, like four, I was fine. Five, I was fat. So, and I think I remember that maybe I weighed 130 by second grade. I mean, I've always been really big, Mm -hmm. but I feel like where we go wrong as a population and as, you know, I'm not a parent, but whereas some parents go wrong is they write the script, they write that internal reporting where they tell, you know, tell their child or tell, you know, say things about themselves that they, you know, they, they hate the way they look, they hate their size and they Mm -hmm. put this emphasis on, you know, being thin or being different or, you know, looking a a certain way. I was on my first diet when I was in second grade, diet pills. My mom was giving me diet pills. Wow. And then when I was in fourth and fifth grade, you know, she, she would send me to school with like (laughs) tuna with mustard and crackers so I felt like, you know, I wouldn't eat because I've never liked tuna. I wouldn't eat at school. And then I would come home to my grandmother, who we lived with, who was a, was a feeder. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, her love language was food. So she would, you know, would feed me and I would overeat. And, you know, that kind of became my, you know, how I felt love and stuff. But it was always, oh, you would be so much prettier if you lost weight. Or, oh, you have such a pretty face. Or, oh, you know, it, I couldn't wear normal size clothes and all these kinds of things mm-hmm. until I graduated high school. And I got probably 19 or 20. And it's so cliche, but I had put a, uh, my profile on Yahoo. This this will date me. <laughs> said, oh, yeah. You know, um, I'm a fat girl. So if you don't like fat girls, kiss my ass and have a nice day. 
And I got this random message from this local guy. And he's like, well, what if I like fat girls? Can I kiss your ass anyway? And I was like, what? <laughs> so I kind of got introduced to this whole subculture of, you know, BBW, which stands for Big Beautiful Women, and FA, which stands for Fat Admirer. So, and it goes both ways. So there are women who like big guys, and there are men that like big women. Mm-hmm. And so... We we went to you know we went out a few times or whatever and one night we were going to be intimate and I remember just the way he paid attention to me and the way he paid attention to my body and the next morning after you know we parted or whatever I went and looked in the mirror and I'm like okay what does he see that I haven't been seeing mm. you know because all my whole life it's like oh you'd be pretty if you know if you're all the you know this whole recording in my mind had been written. And he, had a, I, he had a different recording in his head. He had a different recording. And it was like a light bulb went off in my brain. And I looked at myself and I was like, I'm beautiful now. You know, mm-hmm. I, I, and I really looked at myself with, it was like I put on new glasses and oh, really wow. looked at myself for the very first time. And I was like, Ooh, girl, I'm, that made me teary. Ooh, <laughs> girl. Ooh. You know, I was like, I am fine just the way I am. And what other people say don't matter. And I remember a few, you know, a few months later, this was at college. A few months later, I went home and my mom made a comment about my weight. And I looked at her and I said, you don't have the right to make those comment, those kind of comments about my body anymore. Mm-hmm. What my weight, my nutrition, all of those things are nobody's business, but my own. And we've gotten into a society where fat shaming is like a sport. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And we fat shame people who aren't even fat. Oh yeah, you know. So it's like, oh, uh, but you know, uh, I lost my train of thought. No, <laughs> I think no, that was really that was a really powerful, powerful story. And it was like, and I, I feel like I went from this timid person who really questioned, you know, her own, my own self worth, to looking in the mirror and finally not only liking and accepting what I saw, but loving. And I think you can really see that in the way my dress changed because like I used to cover up as much as I could. And then I started wearing, you know, not crop tops, but like tube tops and, you know, showing more leg and showing more cleavage and stuff like that. And was like, you know, really started embracing who I was. Am I aesthetically pleasing to everybody? Absolutely not. But that doesn't mean a hill of beans to anybody else, but mm-hmm. me and my husband. You know, so it's my, my bot, my self-worth isn't defined by what I look like on the outside. And that's not an easy place to get to. That's a really hard place to get to. And I see that in my niece who just turned 10, you know, she's like, well, my thighs are too big and well, this is, and I'm like, you're 10 and you're beautiful and you're perfect. Yeah. And so I really cringe when, you know, I see people or hear people, especially women who are mothers talk about what they hate about their body. Mm. We have a mutual friend um, on Facebook that we went to high school with who refuses to take pictures or have pictures taken of her unless somebody's in front of her because oh, wow. she's ashamed of her booty. I'm like, you've had three kids. You know, that's a body that carried babies. You gave life. Yeah. <laughs> Be proud of it. <laughs> so, you know, and people are like, oh, you know, I'm just saying this you know, to help. No, you're not. No. Anybody that offers advice to a fat person, it's, I would say nine times out of 10, it's because you don't find them aesthetically pleasing and it has nothing to do with concern about their health, et cetera. It it reminds me of that first question that we answered. It's not about, it's actually not about them. It's your, it's your, your feelings of something that's uncomfortable or something that someone's triggering you and you feel like you need to comment on it. Right. And there's actually this, all this propaganda I call it propaganda with the diet industry, which is like a hundred billion dollar interest industry, mm-hmm. because they're telling you that you're not worthy enough. Even if you're a size two, you're not worthy enough. Mm-hmm. So it's like, no, you know, and there are people who are six, 700 pounds who are in fine health. I mean, I'm over 400 pounds. I have no cholesterol issue, no blood pressure issues. My poor husband, who is, you know, the way he should be, he has serious cholesterol issues, you know, mm-hmm. and being fat doesn't cause diabetes. You have to have a genetic, 
this position. So I feel like as a general public, we just buy into all these food, you know, these health wise, et cetera. And oh, now we have an obesity epidemic. Well, I wonder why we put hormones in our chicken, we put hormones in our beef. Um, I can go to McDonald's and get, you know, a burger and a fry and a drink for $2, but their salads are seven. So it's like, you know, yeah. what are we putting yeah, in Yeah, that food? drives me crazy. Exactly. And so it's like, you know, we, we, it's kind of like that Wally, -E, that movie Wally. -E, yeah, it, like, it is. You know, everybody ends up fat because we've created a science society like that. I mean, kids don't like that teacher, you know, or that principal I had, kids don't need to go outside. I'm like, are you crazy? They need to go outside. They need to play. They, they need to be kids. They need to be exercising. You know, they don't need to be, I mean, not only I could go on a whole tangent off yep. of this quote. No, it's but, great. I think there's a lot, and and even what I want to bring up one point too because so the model is uh uh what is her name? It's Ashley. Ashley Sutner. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna look it up because uh uh because I should do this. Her name is Ashley Graham. So um and I'm not even gonna doesn't even matter what size she is because I don't want to play that game, but. She's a beautiful woman. She's beautiful. She's a model. Right. So, but I know like uh, Cheryl Teagues came out, who is John Legend's wife, um, and who is, uh, um, um, you know, she's a beautiful, quote, beautiful, aesthetic, whatever our, we say, beautiful woman as well. Um, her husband. Ooh, I love John Legend. But anyway, <laughs> so Cheryl Teagues came out and Ashley Graham and said, actually, that she did not support her being on the cover of Sports Illustrated. And she said that because <clears throat> she feels like it's not about the way she looks. I feel like that we're promoting um, uh, Chrissy Teigen. Thank you, Jazzbill. Yeah, it's Chrissy Teigen. Did I, did I say the wrong name? I think no, I it was. No, it was, um, what's her name? Cheryl Teeks that said it, but she's an older supermodel. Oh, yeah. I, I said Cheryl. Thank you, Jazz. There, I'm, we're on Blab right now. So people are watching a video of us talking. They can comment and make it. So anyway, one of our uh, watchers. Um, Christy uh, Teigen is the one that yes, John Christy, Christy 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 Cheryl, Sorry. Um, if Jake, Cheryl, Jake Anthony were here, he'd go, you idiot. You don't know any <laughs> names, which is true. I'm terrible at it. I'm terrible. So, <laughs> that one person said it that yeah. one time. <laughs> <laughs> Which also do, I'll, and I'll talk about this later, but this video will be on YouTube. You look beautiful. I look terrible, but. Um, you look fine. Uh, Rewrite that recording. It's true. Rewrite, Rewrite it. Rewrite it. Because mm -hmm. we are on Blab, that this will be on YouTube for people to watch if they want to watch. So, but, um, so anyway, Chrissy Teigen said that she didn't support Ashley being on Sports Illustrated. She felt like she was, that that's promoting being unhealthy. So I, you know, I know you don't speak for all, you know, people of shapes and sizes. So this is more about your own personal opinion. But how do you respond to that? Like, because to people, have people told you, like, I don't care about the way you look. I just feel like it's unhealthy for you to be this way. Oh, yeah. And you hear that all the time, especially with different commentators, et cetera. But you can have health at any size. And that's actually a movement. I hate, it's called hate, health at every size. Because I'm not any more unhealthy than a person who is a size zero, who's not meant to be a size zero, who's starving themselves to be on the cover of a magazine, who's living on, you know, cigarettes instead of food. So, I mean, you can be thin and be unhealthy. I mean, how many thin people have heart attacks and cardiac disease and those kinds of things because we forget that a lot of it depends on heredity, like your genes you get from your family. And if you have a generally you know, a healthy family, then you may not end up with anything. You could be 150 pounds and die of cancer tomorrow, and I could be 400 whatever pounds and live to I'm 95. You know, so it's just genetics. There's and, a lot of genetics. You know, yeah, everybody yeah, in my you know. family. I mean, I'm not super slim, but I'm fine. Um, but I take after my mom's side of the family. But my my brother, his nephews, they're all like, I mean, you know, my family and they're all right. big people. And that's that. And, right. and my nephews were big from like day. Like I remember them being four or five. I remember my oldest nephew being made fun of a little bit for his weight and stuff when he right. was young. Right. And they're just, but it's, it is interesting to me to, um, <clears throat> pardon me. Because though I have noticed how my nephew was made fun of a little bit when he was younger, but then um, see Jazz Jazz Pill says on Blab she was bullied for her weight as well. So I love that we're talking about this because I think people relate to it. Um, and, and I never related to it 
until I came to LA and especially West Hollywood and the gay scene. And that's when I like, that's when I felt fat for the first time in my life. Because right, right. People here do CrossFit and lift their trucks and have like 0% body fat, which is probably not actually healthy. But anyway, but for men, I feel like there is a difference. Whereas my, my nephews grew up maybe feel uncomfortable, but as they got bigger and they played football and then they're known as like Bubba's and do, and I do feel like there's did such a discrepancy about um, between men and females. And, and I even talk about like, I wrote a paper about this in college. Like I realized that um, because as a narrative therapist, I'm always about like kind of naming characters in your life and things like that. And so one of the characters, it's also very union the theoretical but um <clears throat> one of the characters i talk about is I, I say like that i have an inner fat girl and i say that meaning it's not and the reason why it's a girl and not a guy is because i bring that because i have been shamed for like some literally i've had friends saying like you need to stop eating chips like at a mexican restaurant or like saying things to me about my weight and whereas like and, but also it's like gay guys so it's it, i think it's not the same because it's much worse, I think, for women. But I can, I can relate to a similar experience. Whereas, like my brother out with a bunch of straight guys, it's it's not, it, it's almost it's much more celebrated. And and I don't know. I just feel like, why do you think that there's such a discrepancy for like big men, big women? Well, I think some of it has to do with the fact that women's bodies are sexualized. You know what mm, I mean? Like yeah. that's why there's such a huge controversy when women breastfeed in public because, and why can a man show his nipple on Instagram, but a woman can't show her nipple. It's uh -huh. because we've sexualized the, you know, the, the female body to that extent. But I mean, look at what TV has shown us starting with the honeymooners, you know, he was Jackie Gleason was overweight. And then, you know, the woman that played his wife was really thin. I then, mean, like every the single sitcom. Yeah. King of Queens, you know, Kevin James was really big and Leah Remy was, you know, not. And Micah, Micah Molly was kind of one of the first where Megan right. McCarthy or Melissa McCarthy was not super, super like petite. Right. But then she got into the Hollywood machine and she's lost a ton of weight, which is good for her. I mean, I don't think any, you know, because I'm on my own weight loss journey, but it's like, you know, you can't, I think, I think fact. I don't know. I don't speak for everyone, but I think sometimes we feel like, oh, you know, like Gabby. I don't know her last name. She's rocking it. You know, oh, she's Gabby, you Gabby know, from Precious. Yeah. yeah. You know, she she's large and in charge. <laughs> like the caller, she's living her life, and she gives zero fucks about what anybody yeah, else says does. about her size. And I, you know, I'm kind of to that point as well. Um, I do still have a little bit of anxiety when I go in a crowd of people and. You know, you can call me whatever you want to call me. I mean, hello, they voted me prom queen in junior high. I mean, junior year of high school as a joke. So there's not much oh. more you can do to try to humiliate me. The only thing I hate is when people try to take my picture or when they do take my picture. And I like, I don't like that people at Walmart side. I don't like, you know, I hate when friends like, oh, I took this slide picture of this person with crazy hair or crazy outfit. I just don't like... When anybody is trying to humiliate, that's what it comes down to. You're trying to humiliate somebody else. And why? What does that solve in the world? Nothing. So let me be however size I want to be. You be whatever size you want to be. And just live, you know, live a happy life and not worry about it. But It's so funny to me, too, that when somebody sees you, you know, they probably think that you're, you know, that you're about that you they probably think that you're lazy they probably think that you're not smart they probably think you're not articulate it's all these things we have about what bigger is and i can say this because i see you posting on social media all the time you're like one of the hardest working people i know because you have your day job and i mean we've been talking about your life in this and you're killing it life right now and you're like you give just as great better advice than i do and i'm a freaking therapist you're not <laughs> So, you know, I think that, um, I think I'll see somebody's liking you right now. That's what blab is. So if you see, oh, okay. see how I was there's like, a, there's somebody's face. People are giving this, like hands up. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dick Magnus. <laughs> I appreciate that. But yeah, so I, I, I don't know. I love that. Like that you're, um, I, I love that. I think that's the beauty of YouTube is because I think little girls, 
if like one little girl stumbles upon like one of your videos, I think that would change her life because she sees herself in somebody who's not hiding, who's not feeling bully. I feel like that's what Gabrielle, I'm going to say her last, last name or Simide, whatever. She's changing lives just by right. living her life in, a, in an authentic way. Right. And it's funny because I actually have two channels. I have my Jolly Fight Off channel, which is like my, um, my crafting channel. And then I have, I started a channel called at home with Misty and it was more about documenting kind of like this weight loss journey that I'm not doing very well. But <laughs> I, my very first video was just, it's basically 45 minutes of me crying and talking about, you know, my anxiety and depression and those kinds of things. And I get emails every single day from women who are my size or a little larger or a little smaller who just say, thank you for putting yourself out there. I think people like to see other people functioning well, oh, Yeah, you know, and I don't have it all together. I mean, I, I felt like I was going to have a nervous breakdown last year, but you know, it's all about, again, it's just, I, I, I'm 38. I'll be 38 in April. I haven't talked to my own mother in two years and I haven't talked to my father in about a year because I got to the point where I was like, I cannot handle any more toxic relationships in my life. And I cut out people who were toxic. And unfortunately, you know, you don't get to choose your parents, but you know, my mother was a toxic, toxic person and people, I don't have any friends in my life who would treat me as any less because of my size. And yeah. if I had those people in my life, they are no longer in my life mm -hmm. because I, I don't want any kind of that toxicity around. And I'm like I said, I'm very lucky that I have a man who, you know, enjoys the aesthetic that I'm in right now, mm -hmm. but also supports my efforts into losing some weight. And it's not because I feel like I need to lose weight to get healthy or anything like that. Although health is my word of the year for 2016. Mm -hmm. It's all about being, you know, able to be more mobile and to get around better and to get where I was before. So I think it's just, you know, I don't think I stepped into this thinking that I was going to be some kind of role model or anything like that. But if I can help just one person look at themselves and go, I'm worthy in what is what I, you know, what this is does not define who I am. Mm -hmm. So am I a fat person? Absolutely. Does my weight affect my life? I try not to let it. I mean, there are some things I can't do. Like I can't go on a roller coaster. Not that I would, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's a little less convenient to fly. It's a little bit more expensive because I pay for that, you know, that extra seat and those kinds of things. But I think people just have to, you know, just be yourself and learn to love yourself for who you are and change if you want to, but don't feel like you have to change to fit some societal norm. Yeah. So wow. hopefully that made any kind of sense. Yeah, I think hand. that's a great note to end <laughs> on that. I love that. I love that. If you're on Blab, I put the, I put the link to Missy's video. Some of you asked. I put the link to her first video in the notes. Um, you can watch that. And I will. So so tell everybody, like, thank first of all, thank you so much. I 100 percent I'm going to do another show with you because I just. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're so insightful and you just um maybe finally when I get to Dallas sometime, maybe we'll do like a YouTube video because oh, that would be awesome. I am I would love to do it with you, but also too, um in April, uh look out everybody because I'm launching uh uh Dear Maddie YouTube videos. So um you can go on. I know I used to do three little words. You love, you love I love three little I words. I love three little words too, but I'm just kind of carrying over the brand of what Dear Maddie is. And so I'll be answering some it really is the same as three little words. It's just me answering some advice questions. But I'm finding I like doing that with people as well. So I'm just kind of bringing on people and just a little two minute videos. So be on the lookout for that. Um but still tell everybody where uh uh, where they can uh, find, oh, real quick, Jazz Spills on um, on Blab is asking, do you have a YouTube camera setup, Misty? That's what she's asking about your camera setup for YouTube. I don't know what that means. Um, I don't know what that means either. I mean, I, I film, um, when you watch my crafting videos, you really kind of see my hands. And then if you can see behind me, I have studio lights, and that's where I film uh, when I'm in front of the camera. So oh, fancy, Fan you! I I have those and I don't set them up. So you're more professional than me, and I'm a host. <laughs> um, great. And uh, Jasmine, the lights do help. You can get <laughs> so you can get a whole kit from um, Amazon if you want to do that. Oh yeah, yeah, it's really cheap. it's really cheap. So tell everybody where they can find all things Misty. 
I'm the Jolly Fat Elf everywhere. So the Jolly Fat Elf at Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, blah, blah, blah. All of that <laughs> everywhere. And, and, and so, and, uh, and yeah. And so if you're, I, you know, if you're interested in crafting, great. But if you're interested in just an awesome person, go to yourself. Cause I just, I, I love you. I love you. Love you. I think oh, what I you do you and I'll put the link of my wonder even though you're not making ornaments anymore. I'm not making ornaments anymore. I'm so glad that I have my Wonder Woman because it's so fucking awesome. <laughs> it is awesome. Beautiful. Um, I loved it so much. So for, th for the rest of you, um, you know that- Do we have to go? It's time to go. I know. Mama's got to go uh, to, to work, unfortunately. So, um, but uh, for the rest of you, uh, you can um, you can find me at dearmattyshow.com. You can go to- um, I'm everything is the Matt Marr. So, and, and, um, yeah, that's please go to dearmattyshow.com and send your questions. So, um, Jazz Pills or Depp Magnus, you people on Blab, if any of you have Charles Bruno, if any of you have some questions that you need to ask that for advice questions, go to the website. And that's about, thank you so, so much for doing this. I love, um, I love that, uh, we just have reconnected in this way. I love it so Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Love yeah. it so much. Yeah. So, um, all right, everybody. So, uh, go, go to the website and, um, be, be, uh, be, do something for someone this week and we'll see you next week. All right. Bye. Bye.